you know, it was just we after losing to them twice last year, um, then winning the, the Pac-12 championship. You know, we just knew that, you know, they have a chip on their shoulder to go and do that same thing again this year. Um, and so I just knew that I had to come out ready to go, come out play physical. My team did that same thing as well. Um, we were pre just prepared. And, you know, I just want to say um, thank you to all the fans. Thank you to the Greek life um, for coming out and just that huge support. You know, that was, that was major. Riley, when, when did you kind of have an idea that you, you could hang with this team and maybe even beat them? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you always have to have that that attitude that, you know, you can go out and beat anybody, you can hang with anybody. Um, I think, you know, the start of this year, uh, after a couple of weeks of working out and practicing, <clears throat> seeing this team come together, um, you know, we, we have a lot of good pieces on our team. <coughs> I think we knew we'd be really competitive, obviously, until the year starts um, and game time starts, you don't know. But um, I just think, you know, this team comes in, works hard every day, and we bring it every single day, and we need to continue doing that. Um, and I think that just sets the bar really high for us. What were the, the thoughts or emotions that kind of came up for you guys as the clock was ticking to zero at the end of the game? Um, you know, uh, it, was just, it was just exciting. You know, we, we, it was a battle all game. You know, we'd get the lead, they'd cut it down. We'd get the lead again, they cut it down. Um, so when you just saw that those last final seconds go off, it, it was great. You know they're they're an amazing team, great program, coach really well, play very hard, um, and so just to be able to get this win, um, start off Pac-12 conference play, you know on a, on a win is just it's great. Raleigh, you were one assist away from a triple double. I mean, where do you rank you this really? performance and kind of your your time in college? Um. Yeah. You know, I I don't really stat watch or anything like that. A couple of people came up to me after the game. Um. You know, I just think it's a credit to my teammates. Uh, a lot of people box out hard. I was able to clean up the boards, and then, you know, people uh, made tough shots for me, you know. Um, but I just think we played an overall great game, a uh, really physical game. Uh, and, again, credit to our, you know, the Moss, our student section, all our fans, everyone who came out because it was roaring in there, and it was a really fun uh, environment. You guys have been a part of these games before where you build up the big lead. You know they're going to go on a run, right? They're not going to not make those shots again. They, they could get it down to, I think it was seven points, and then you guys go back on your run. I mean, how hard is it to kind of keep that momentum knowing that it's like, you know this is going to come, but you can't let it just kind of snowball into the point where they take the lead or something? Yeah, you know, I think, uh, you know, credit to them. They kept coming back every single time we extended the lead, and I think that's what great teams do, um, and they're a great team. They've proven that uh, year after year and uh, the beginning of this season. But I just think our poise, um, and I know I had a couple bad ones late uh, that led to some transition threes, but I think our poise, just being able to be tough with the ball and execute down the stretch was huge. Brandon, um, what was it like for you um, having the performance that you did, but also having to defend um, Tabellis at the other end as well? Um, you know, well, just defending Tabellis, you know, he's uh, big bodied, he's, he runs the floor really hard, posts hard, um, and he's just, he's just a great player. So we knew coming in that. You know, we were going to have to try and do the job on him. And, you know, I think he had, like, you know, 20 points. So, um, you know, it's hard, to, it's hard to guard them when they, you know, get deep position from running the floor. And you just got to try and do what you, you can. Um, and, you know, just credit to him. You know, he's, he's a great player. So, For both of you guys, what message does this send? You guys were picked 10th in the league. What message does this send to the rest of the pack well? Um, I just say uh, we're a tough team. You know, we're going to come out and play hard. Um, you know, we obviously you got to have some talent. Uh, but I just credit our guys, our coaching staff. They had us really prepared. Uh, you know, Coach Smith, assistants, everybody, you know, Wade Scott, uh, Coach O, uh, Trevor, everybody got us ready. And I just think uh, we're going to be a team that's going to come out um, and give it 100% every night. What would you say Just the message that this sends to the community. Just, you know, don't doubt us. Don't, don't doubt us. Don't count us out. What do you guys think this win means for Coach Smith? You know, he came in last year after three really good years. I mean, you probably were coached by him. After three really good years at USU, not the best first year. This year obviously got better, but this win, what do you think it means for, for him? And what does it mean for you guys to win for him? Yeah, I think it means a ton. Obviously, it's a huge win. They're a great team. Uh, and opening conference up that way is big for us, a uh, big momentum boost. Uh, but like uh, he said, and we all acknowledged in the locker room, uh, we got a game coming up Sunday. So we're going to enjoy this one tonight and then uh, start preparing tomorrow. Brandon, you had five three-pointers tonight. I think that's the most you've had in your collegiate career. But did, 
do you feel like that's that's one of those things that you know if they're going to give you that that open space that you feel like comfortable shooting that does that kind of add to your repertoire? Yeah, definitely. I just think you know. Um, Watching Arizona and some film, their bigs a lot of times on non-shooting bigs would just kind of sit there. So I was I was ready for them to like, you know, if there's gaps or uh, just picking it up, you know. Um, and so I think that a little bit I was planning on being down inside a little bit more this game anyway. But just how it worked out, um, you know, I was making my shots take great passes from from Raleigh and from other people to to hit those. So um, you know, it's just it's just falling for me today. So. What do you think it, it kind of took for you guys? Because I think down to seven or, or they got it down to seven or six. And in that moment, what do you guys have to drudge up inside yourself to say, we have a run in us and they're not gonna they're not gonna come back and take the lead on us? You know, it's just it's just effort and attitude and just the mindset, you know, like this game's not over. We got more in us. Um, you know, they we started we know we can we can get the lead and we can extend it again. We've had we've had the lead for most of the game and we've extended it plenty of time so it's just knowing that you can do it again and just not having um, any more of those mental breakdowns during the game. Well that's a big time win Arizona for our program. Um, what a great win. Arizona is so good you guys you just don't even um, I mean watching their three games at um, in Maui to win that championship um, that field's always really good but I thought this year in particular was absolutely stacked. And, uh, you know, you just look at their numbers coming into the game. They're very, Tommy's a very good coach. Obviously, they're, they're the champs. They're the defending champs. They got a lot of moxie, a lot of confidence, a lot, a lot of swagger. And they've earned that, I mean, because they've been there, done that. And so every year's a new year. We're certainly a different team. They're a little bit different, but they just um, cause so many problems. And, you know, when you look at their numbers coming into the game, if I said to somebody, like, this specific player – if they average over 60% from the field and they average 45% from the three, right, you would say, like, wow, like, those are really good numbers for a, a, a player. And their team is averaging that. Like, and it's not like they were just playing a bunch of stiffs. They've played three high, high-level teams in Cincinnati, San Diego State, and Creighton to win the title. So um, we had our hands full, and anytime you're in a game like that, you got to kind of pick your poison and – so I always, it's a little bit like being in a poker game. You got to kind of know when to go in all in on with a set of a pair of eights, you know. And and so we took some chances, changed up our defenses a little bit, just to try to keep them a little bit off balance. But I'm proud of our guys, man. We we weathered the storm. They they came out like we knew they would on the start of that second half, right? I think they 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 uh, got an, uh, I think they hit a three or a quick two, then we answered the bell. BC hits one, and then they hit another one, and. I felt like they had all the momentum there, but our guys really responded and and found a way to win. And what a great crowd! I want to thank the uh, the Mus, our student body, had a great showing tonight. I want to thank Greek Life. You know, I was out seeing a lot of those um, students on on Monday night, which was which was really awesome. And um, and then all the fans that stayed here that are now making the trip to to Las Vegas, like that means so much to us and our program. And you could feel the electricity tonight. And, um, and their, their support, their energy, that really willed us um, down the stretch. We played some guys some really long minutes and longer than maybe we typically do. But um, thank you for making a difference tonight. So a lot of great performances, but I just thought we really played connected. You know, we, we had a I, – I kept saying to you guys and to our team, we, we really grew up the last 10 days. That trip to Florida was really good for us. Mississippi State's an excellent team. But I, you could just see some of these young guys and some of these – even new guys, they're just figuring some things out and getting comfortable with our style and what we're trying to do. Um, and uh, and you could see that tonight, specifically with some of the new guys. So um, we really guarded well to hold that team to four for 28 from the three. You know, they were also making almost 19 free throws a game and to, you know, hold them for 12 for 18 and, and 35% for the game. That's been our deal this year. Defense travels. Um, you know, some people would say, well, and we certainly haven't played a team like this. And I mean, nobody has. They're the best in the country offensively. But we showed some moxie and showed some grit and, um, and played very, very connected. Did a great job taking away. Uh, I mean, Chris is such a, an elite player to hold him to four points and one for nine. Obviously, he gets nine assists. And uh, Courtney Ramey has been playing at a very high level. Uh, four for 13 for 11 points. I thought that was a big key. Balo and, and Tabellis are so good. I mean, I mean, Balo goes 10 for 12. 
um, 22, and obviously Tabellis is 20. So, but to be a draw in the paint at 40, you know, we we scored 42, they scored 40. If you can kind of stay close to even with them in the paint, you're you're doing something really good. And so we kind of neutralized them, but we're able to still finish plays in the paint on our end. So I could talk all day. I'm pretty excited. Um, but Raleigh uh, really just anchored. Uh, you know, he guarded uh, Kurt. I uh, was Kerr, Kurt, how do you say it? Krista he guarded him all night, and I don't know how many minutes Raleigh played, 37, and then almost gets a triple double. I mean, he's just getting his nose in there and making things happen, and uh, but just had a lot of great efforts. Great. Obviously, you mentioned Raleigh right there. He's, he's obviously not the, the flashiest player at times, but you've been able to coach him through his career. What, what, I mean, is, is this his best performance that you've seen from him, just being able to kind of be that figure on the court? Yeah, and Raleigh, Raleigh – you know, Raleigh's so dependable. He's just um, – he's like a middle linebacker that can kind of read a defense and find the hole and just – it's just really hard to get things on him, def- you know, whoever he's guarding. Whether it's a misdirection play or a ball screen, he's a very physical. You don't realize how big he is. Um, and he just has a nose for the ball. You know, it's his third year. And he's had a lot of playing experience. He's our starting point guard in the NCAA tournament team his freshman year. That's hard to do. It's hard to do. Um, last year, he went through some growing pains, right? But he had a heck of a summer, and he's gotten way better. It's easy to see he's gotten better. He just looks different out there this year than he did a year ago. Maybe some of that is he has more help, maybe, right? That can help. But he's just he's, – he's, he puts the time in. He really works at it. He's tough. He's gotten more athletic, which is, I think, a norm, you know, kind of a normal thing the older you get, right? And so um, really proud of him. What kind of message do you think this sends <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, you know, we're going to find out now for uh, – what does it say? I mean, it says it, – it, I think it says that we can play with anybody. You know, what does that mean? I don't know. Like, you know, for every um, – how does that quote go? Um, for every 100 men that can handle failure, only one can handle success, right? And I, I've always believed in that. You know, it's um, – basketball is a humbling game. Athletics and life is very humbling, and so we, you, you can't be a team that's like way up here and then way down here and then way up here and way down, right? And that's a challenge. And this is obviously a big time emotional win, and we got a super quick turnaround to get for Washington State uh, with a one o'clock game. So it, it's going to be really interesting. You know, I, I thought going into the game tonight, we're going to find out a lot about our team. Like I just, I, I knew we were going, and it could have gone a lot of ways. You know, we could have been blown out of the water, and we could win a. You know, uh, we lose a tight game. We could win a tight game. I didn't think, you know, maybe we win by eight, whatever. I didn't. Hard to know, but I just felt like tonight we're going to find out a lot about who we are and our courage and our connectivity. And we had two. You know, even after St. Thomas, we really guarded well. But I just we made ten threes that game. But we, I don't know, we missed some plays in there. We had a pretty poignant film session on um, on Tuesday, and um, and our guys answered the bell. We had probably our two best practices of the year. Um, the last two days, and that's generally speaking a good sign. What do you think this performance does for you personally as a coach? Obviously, you came in last year, um, tough year for a multitude of reasons, and I think a lot of people would say this is your most impactful win since being coach here. So, like, what does it mean? Yeah, I mean, anytime you play the, it, these opportunities are hard to come by. Like, you want to have these opportunities every year. I've said it in the pregame, like, in the pregame, and I said it in the media, like, we need, like, Arizona being number four in the country, right? And the defending champ. We need more of that. Like, this league needs more of that. That's where this league's got to go. That's where we're trying, that's where we're aspiring to go and be. And we're not going to shy away from that. So how often do you get an opportunity to play the number four team in the country, right? Or a top ten team in the country. These, lim- these opportunities don't happen often. And you have to crave it. you got to want it. I don't worry about myself. I just know what we as coaches and what I've been able to see in practice, and we haven't had a ton of practice time, but I know what I saw in Florida. I know what I saw in Florida. And I know what I saw even in St. Thomas. And I know what we saw in these practices, especially in the last 10 days. You could see, like, these guys are incrementally getting better as a team, but as Kebakeda. I mean, that guy's starting to figure – I mean, he's not there yet, but he's starting to figure some things out. I thought Will Exact gave us some really good minutes tonight. Right, and it's a big adjustment when you're a freshman, so you can see Ben Carlson is starting to kind of figure some things out, and he had some big moments tonight. So, um, yeah, it's a huge win when you beat the number four team in the country. It's a huge win for our program. 
right? I think it's a huge message for a uh, uh, win for our fan base, right? And uh, it is. It's a big win for us. Hey, Coach Smith, a uh, couple of things I want you to comment on. You can take it however you want, but you're an amazing talker, so I appreciate it. Um, These guys are always giving me the hook. My <laughs> wife always does it. And every now and then, Jay's got to be like, hey, can you just shut up? Like, so I got two point, more questions. I, I know Arizona made some threes down the stretch, but yeah. at one point they were two for 16, and I think Tabellas and, and Ballo had 67% of their points. Um, was there anything you did defensively different tonight to defend the perimeter, A? Uh, B, how big of a factor do you think it was to be in Arizona's first true road game? Obviously, Maui's different than, yeah. than this environment. And then I guess three, um, <clears throat> Did you guys know or talk about this being the anniversary of Rick Majerus' death 10 years ago? He just gave me goosebumps on that. Uh, so one, screen and roll coverages. Yesterday in film, <clears throat> we showed, obviously, um, you know, like we always do, preparation for Arizona. But what, one thing that I had watched both of our games from a year ago, and obviously they're a different team, we're a different team. But there was certainly, just because of the way they play, some things we had... Like, we showed them. Because some of it pertained to Marco, some pertained to Raleigh, Gabe, Steph, right? And even either other guys that aren't here. So screen roll defense. We had to be way better. We were awful in it last year, and they just carved us up. We had to be way more physical and tougher. And we are, though, this year, right? Our guys have gotten better that way. Um, so I think that, that made a big, big difference just with our screen roll coverages. And our bigs have more um, versatility to do more things with screen roll defense. Um, so is that the first question? Yeah. Uh, and then the true road. And, and so, and then taking away the three, I think you had said something about that. We've done a really good job with that all year. Some of that is some of the teams we've played haven't necessarily been like elite three point shooting teams, but we've done a really good job with that and understanding spacing and personnel. Right. And so, um, if you can get through a ball screen quicker and more physical, you don't have to help as long in what we call plug situations or tag situations. So it just makes you better, right, on that end. Two, the road game thing, you know, it is different. We, we Somebody said to me the other day, we haven't had a true road game either, and road games are different. And I, I'm a big believer in, like, I mean, it's hard to come by nowadays. I want to play home and homes with teams in non-conference, but it's hard to do. We got to get our program elevated I think for more teams to be willing to do that because they look at it like well that's not sure that's the right but that's a whole other story on scheduling um but it can be different obviously we are at altitude so that can take a little bit of effect on some teams but these guys are I mean so athletic and so fast and gifted uh, that can matter maybe but you know when you're in Maui it's not a true road game but you have the usually all the teams travel at a high level so it can feel you know you have some resistance there, I guess, in the stands. And three, I read a tweet on that today um, about Coach Majerus. And, man, what a legendary figure. Um, I got to know him a little bit, not real well, but certainly like Chris Burgess played for him. And, of course, being here for a year. And Chris Harriman's a good friend of mine who was an assistant for Coach Majerus at St. Louis, an elite coach. I remember as a young coach when he was doing uh, TV for a while, I would just love to listen to him. Because his detail and the ability to communicate, but what a legendary figure, and uh, it's pretty cool. But we did not share that with our guys, but I am going to share that with them tomorrow. Awesome. Thank you for bringing that up. Any other questions for Coach? Well, what's it like for you? You mentioned the, them coming out in the second half strong, and then I think towards the end, in five minutes or so, they started pressing you. They got a couple of yeah. threes. I mean, are you worried at that point? What's going on? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things. You, you like, listen – Championship pedigree teams, they're, they're never going to go away easy. <laughs> like, no chance, right? And you know it when you got it. And I've been fortunate to be on some really, really good teams, and there's a lot of pride. And they, they trust each other, and they will never back down. And so you knew. I think we got – one of our guys had a tip dunk. Maybe it was Kata off the free throw. Yeah. I think we went up 18. And, you know, we we're all kind of – and then boom, boom, and it's 12, right? And it's like – here we go. And then we kind of looked a little, you know, it's like a boxer in the ring where your legs are a little wobbly and they're just heating us up and coming from all angles. And uh, to their credit, and we got a little slide. We got a couple passes that were like, oh boy, how do we complete that? A shoe fell off and somehow the ball got to Marco and he was like running away from it. But I think it was Raleigh or Steph that passed that one. But but we did just enough. You know, it's still 12, still, uh, what did it get down to nine, I think it was, and Raleigh hit the two free throws. 
Um, they, they really were loading up and being physical. And we always tell our guys in that kind of situation, you got to expect the foul, but not the call, you know, because they're going to do everything they can and they're going to take some chances, right? Um, and in those situations, you just got to keep looking below you. Right, keep looking down the floor because that's where it's weak usually, and everyone's always looking sideways and this way. And um, but our guys, you know, we were able to make our free throws late for the most part, and got enough easy ones on the back end of the of the press to to finish it off. But that's not an easy task to do. Um, you know, that's just not an easy thing to do. Unfortunately for us, we were able to finish finish it off. Well, I thought Brandon had an unbelievable game. I know I said Raleigh, and we brought up Kaba and Will, but boy, did he make some monster shots tonight. I mean, the one right in front of our bench, I felt like we were kind of, I mean, it was, you know, probably around the 14-minute mark or something like that. It wasn't, but that was a monster shot for us. And, you know, there's ebbs and flows, and there's matchups are an interesting thing. And Balo is, I mean, Balo is 10 for 12 from the field, seven rebounds, 22 points, right? But he's also... You know, we, we're stretching it. We're it, There's a chess match, right? A game within the game. And now he's got to extend and come out and guard, you know, BC or Ben. Ben, big big three. Excuse me, big three. He rips right hand, gets a dunk. But BC just had a great look in his eyes tonight. I mean, he just had a look like you would expect out of an all-league guy and a fourth-year guy. And those guys, everybody wants to be the man until it's time to be the man. And when you're the man, you got to show up every day. And you're going to get everybody's best punch, and you're going to get everybody. But he just had a big time look to, to his uh, in his eyes. Eight for 15, 22 points, five for nine from the three. Played with great poise. Coach, one little thing: uh, the, the TV broadcast caught you after the game running into the stands to, to find someone. Who was it? What was that about? Uh, well, which time? <laughs> no, right, right away after we shook hands, I hugged every guy because it's. It's tough, man. Like these guys believe in us as coaches and our institution, what we're doing, and it's, you know, we're we're trying to climb and get somewhere, right? And, um, um, you know, we, I, I climbed. The first thing I did went into the student body, uh, went into the mus, went into the Greek where the Greek a lot of the Greek row was sitting, and just said thank you, you know, because fans impact winning, right? And it's, I mean, you got to put a good product on the floor, and everybody loves a winner, but fans impact winning. Go to Arizona. That place is sold out every game. It's freaking. It's really hard to win there, and we can name a bunch of other institutions or programs that are like that. Fans impact winning in a major way. So I just want to say thank you to all the students for being there, and um, and take a few selfies and do the whole thing. Uh, and then of course afterwards, I just hug my wife and and um, my kids. My kids. Last one. All right. Thanks, coach. Thank you, guys. Thanks.